In this short video, we're going to start talking about lines, one of the most important topics in our preparation for taking calculus. So let's start by looking at something which is purely algebraic. It's an equation in two variables, x plus y equals 4. We have two variables, x and y. So this is different from an equation with only one variable. Uh, there we saw that there could be uh, three cases. You could have one solution, you could have no solutions, you would get a contradiction, or you could have an identity. Well, here, when you have one equation with two variables, there's always infinitely many solutions. There's any x and y pair which will add up to 4 would be a solution. So x equals 1 and y equals 3, or x equals negative 1, y equals 5, x equals 4.5, and y equals 0 0.5. No, that doesn't add up to uh, 4, does it? Let's make a quick correction there. It really should have been negative 0 0.5. There we go. I'll have to correct it on the future slides, too. No problem. Let's get that going. When we have these solutions, then, we write them as ordered pairs, meaning that uh, we put, what does that mean? We're going to have the x value first and the y value second. That's the idea of ordered. If we had different letters, we uh, always go in alphabetical order. And then it's surrounded by parentheses. So that's what we mean by an ordered pair. That's how we could write down these solutions. Now there's kind of a problem here. And that is because there's infinitely many, there's no way we can write them all down. But still, the solution set itself would be interesting. We'd like to be able to study its properties. And so to help us understand that, we're going to go to geometry. So in geometry, a line, now as a geometric option, uh, geometric object, if you have two points, there's exactly one line that passes through those two points. And in geometry, ordered pairs represents the coordinates of a point in the plane. So if we can show, and we can, that the solutions to an equation in two variables like x plus y equals 4 are the coordinates of the points on a line, then that gives us a useful way to show all of the solutions. If we can sketch the line in the plane corresponding to x plus y equals 4, then uh, we've got a nice way of representing the solution set and a good way to study its properties. So we're going to start by looking at or graphing the solution set of a given equation by just plotting some of the solutions, plotting the points. Remember, the solutions can be solutions to the algebraic equation, but then they're also coordinates of points on the plane. So we're going to systematically find some solutions. We'll be choosing, we're allowed to choose values for one of the variables in most cases. So we'll either choose x values or we'll choose y values depending upon the equation. And then using the equation, we'll find the other value. Now, geometrically, we only need two points. But because we might make a mistake, we're always going to plot three points as a check. So here's an example, the one we started out with, x plus y equals 4. So we're going to choose some values for x. We like to choose small values. We like to choose values where if I have a grid like the one shown here, that, that we can plot them on the grid. We want to avoid fractions if at all possible. 
So if x equals 0 is going to be a good point, we'll like to use that. So solving then for y, I'll put 0 in for x and solve for y, I get y equals 4. So x equals 0, y equals 4, that would be the point 0, 4. So right over here. Dot maybe I can. I'll emphasize that later. So now we'll choose another value for x. I could choose x equals 1. I went ahead and chose x equals 2. I'm kind of looking ahead at some of the solutions that I'll get. Uh, if I choose x equals 2, even in my head, I could see that y would equal 2 as well. So I'd get the point 2, comma 2. And I can go ahead and choose x equals 4. And that'll give me y equals 0. So I'll get the point 4, comma 0. So now that I have these three, let me go ahead and emphasize my points here. I've got, oops, yeah. maybe a little bit bigger there. There we go. There are my three points. So let me go ahead and draw a line through those points. And then lines go on forever and ever in both directions. So whenever we are sketching a line, we're going to remember to put arrowheads on either end. So if, it's, if you don't do that, uh, then it's not a line. It's a line segment or maybe a half line, which we call a ray. So uh, we want to remember to put the arrowheads on both ends of the line. All right, let's look at another example here. Now, in this equation, I have x equals 5 minus 2y, and it's solved for x. We have x equals. So now, instead of choosing x values, I'm going to choose y values. So I'll start with y equals 0, and Go ahead and put 0 in for y, solve for x, I get x equals 5, and I've got the point 5 comma 0 over here. I'll choose uh, y equals 2, and then I'll get, uh, what, 5 minus 4, which gives me x equal to 1. So 1 comma 2, and one more point, uh, I'll choose y equals 4. And uh, so 5 minus 8 is negative 3. So I got the point negative 3 comma 4, which is this point here. Now when I choose these three lines, if for some reason they don't lie on the same line, then I have to go back and check my arithmetic and maybe my algebra to make sure I didn't make a mistake. Because there must be a mistake somewhere. They should all lie on the same line. So let's go ahead then. Again, these are the points that I'm going to connect with a straight line. And hopefully I can do that. All right, maybe a little bit off, but without a straight edge, it's a little challenging. And I remember to put the arrowheads on. All right, in our third example, we can see that x is being multiplied by a fraction, 2 thirds. Uh, so I would like to choose values for x, but I don't want to plot points where the coordinates are fractions. And so the way that I can avoid that when x is being multiplied by a fraction is I look at the denominator here, which is 3. And so I'm going to choose x values, which are multiples of 3. And that way, I'll get a whole number for x and a whole number for y, or at least an integer. So if I choose x equals 0, then I'll get y equals 2. If 
if I choose x equals 3, 2 thirds of 3 is 2, and 2 plus 2 makes 4. And then finally, if I choose x equals 6, I get the 0 0.6, 6. Now, the grid that I have here is limited, and the 0 0.6, 6 is not on this grid. So that's fine. What I can do is instead of choosing x equals 6, which is kind of a big number anyway, I, I could have a negative multiple of 3. So why don't I choose x equals negative 3? And so then I'll get negative 2 plus 2, which makes 0. Now I've got my three points, and I should be able to just... Somehow I lost my point here. Uh, it should be here at negative 3, 0. And let's go ahead and try to sketch our line. through those three points. And as always, I'm going to remember to put arrows at both ends. Oh, there, there is the point. OK, no problem. I must have hit back instead of forward. All right, here's a, an interesting equation, y equals 2. There is no x. And so what that tells me is that I can choose any x value I want, and the y coordinate, or the y value, is always 2. So if I choose x equals 0, y will be 2. If I choose x equals 3, y will be 2. And if I choose x equals 6, y will be 2. And I get a horizontal line here, and that makes sense. Uh, its slope should be 0. So let's go ahead and then apply these three here. So we can just draw a straight line and put our arrow heads on it. All right, in this example, there's no y. But we know x equals 3, so x is always 3, no matter what y value I choose. So I can choose y equals 0, and x will be 3. I can choose y equals 2, x will be 3. I can choose y equals 4, and x will be 3. So now I get a vertical line, so let's go ahead and draw that line. And remember to put our arrowheads. Now there are two important points for uh, almost every line. It's not horizontal or vertical. Any sloping line is going to hit both the x-axis and the y-axis. So the point where the graph crosses the x-axis has a special name, and we call it the x-intercept. And the point where the graph crosses the y-axis is called the y-intercept. So on the x-axis, all the y-values are 0, all the y-coordinates. And on the y-axis, all the x-coordinates are 0. So I could potentially graph an equation of a line by uh, just looking at the intercepts. And that should be fairly easy because we're going to be substituting 0 for one of the variables. So to find the x-intercept, we're going to set y equal to 0 and solve for x. And so I get the point 4 comma 0. And then to find the y-intercept, I'm going to choose x equals to 0 and solve for y. And I get 0 comma negative 2. But I always want to be careful and choose at least one more point 
to get a check on my work. And so I'll go ahead. And it's not obvious what other point you want to choose, uh, but it looks like here uh, x equals 2 uh, will avoid fractions. So sometimes you have to go back and choose a different value if you get a fraction, or you can just try to plot the, the fractional point. Um, so here, when x equals 2, y equals negative 1, and I see that all three lie on the same line, so let me go ahead then and draw that line as best I can. And remember to put the arrows on either end. And so we're going to learn how to uh, have a more efficient way of, of graphing lines, but for now, plotting points will work for us.